Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at natural causes of flooding. This is part of Paper 1, Unit C, River Landscapes. In order to understand physical causes of flooding, you need to understand the hydrological cycle, also known as the water cycle. This shows how precipitation returns to a river. So we have a look at the diagram. We have evaporation um, where water is lost from the ground surface. We then have transpiration where water is lost from vegetation. You can then see towards the top of the diagram, we've got condensation where water vapour is turning into liquid to form clouds. This leads to precipitation, which is any form of moisture reaching the ground, such as rain or snow. We've then got some other key terms on the screen that you need to be aware of. We've got infiltration, where water seeps down into the soil, and we've got percolation, where water seeps down into the rock. We've then got three ways that the water gets back to the river. We have surface runoff, which is also known as overland flow, where the water is flowing over the ground. And if we have more surface runoff, then we have a higher chance of a flood happening. We've also got through flow, where water is flowing horizontally through the soil, and groundwater flow, where water is flowing back through the rock. The other key terms that you need to know are soil moisture, which is water held in soil, groundwater, which is where water is stored in the rock, and then we have the water table, which is the upper level of saturated rock and soil. Once that is reached, no more water can be absorbed. So we need to know these key terms to understand flooding. But this video is all about the physical factors that increase the flood risk. So let's start thinking about those. There are quite a few of them. So firstly, we're going to start off by looking at weather events. Heavy rainfall is the main cause of flooding. Flooding from heavy rainfall can happen in two ways. Firstly, we have slow building floods. These are caused by prolonged heavy rainfall, caused by bands of depressions passing over the UK, particularly during winter. Continuous heavy rain leads to saturated soil that cannot absorb any more water, leading to increased surface runoff, which causes rainwater to enter the river quickly. This means that river discharge increases rapidly and it makes a flood event more likely. In contrast, we have flash floods. These are caused by sudden heavy downpours of rain, which overwhelm drainage systems, causing surface runoff again. Flash floods rise quickly, however, they also start to subside quickly as the water starts to infiltrate or drain away. Flash floods sometimes occur after a period of drought, when the land has been baked hard, which prevents infiltration. In addition to these, we have sudden snow melt, which can also lead to flooding after the water stored as ice is suddenly released. Our second physical factor that increases the risk of flooding is relief. This refers to the height and shape of the land and it has a big impact on flood risk. Steep slopes increase the likelihood of flooding because it is easier for rainfall to flow down the slopes as surface runoff rather than to infiltrate the soil. The steeper the valley, the more likely it is to flood. But low-lying areas also have a high flood risk. This is because water can spread out easily over a large area, but the gradient is too flat to enable water to move out of the area quickly. A good example of this is the Somerset level floodings in winter 2013 to 2014, where excess water had to be pumped out. This is what you can see on the screen. Our final physical factor that can increase the risk of flooding is geology. The type of rock in an area can increase the risk of flooding and geology is often linked to relief. Upland areas are often made of impermeable rock such as slate which leads to very distinctive landscapes. Impermeable rock doesn't allow water to pass through it so infiltration cannot occur. Mountainous landscapes often have bare rock with thin soils and little vegetation to intercept rainfall. In areas like the Lake District, excess rainfall flows down the slopes as waterfalls, which then can disappear a few days later once surface runoff has subsided. 
In contrast, low-lying areas are often covered in impermeable clays. And while there is vegetation to intercept rainfall, infiltration doesn't really occur as clay soils are very compacted, so water cannot get through. Areas with permeable rocks, such as limestone and chalk, have a much lower risk of flooding as the water can pass through these rocks, which decreases surface runoff. Precipitation, relief and geology are all linked and combined to increase the likelihood of flooding. For example, the Lake District in northwest England has one of the highest rainfall totals in the UK and steep slopes mainly made from impermeable slate. So flood events are regular here. A good example is a devastation caused in the village of Glen Ridding in December 2015, which you can see on the screen following Storm Desmond. The storm caused 341 millimetres of rainfall in 24 hours, which is the highest ever rainfall total recorded in the UK. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on the natural causes of flooding. Thank you for watching.